Today, customer appreciation is free wash and dry. Laundry is something everybody needs to do, and, and for a lot of these people, it's kind of a chore. And so to come in and be able to do it for free, you just see it on their face. It's unexpected to get something for free without a catch. He's been amazing, and working here has been amazing for my life. His heart is in it. He really cares about his customers. We were staying with my mother originally, and then um, she fell down the stairs and broke all the bones in her, her leg. And then, I think two days later, the apartment caught on fire. So we all ended up homeless, me and my husband and my kids. My boss really cares because he really cares about all, all everybody that works here. And it took a year before purchasing this location, and then it burned down. <laughs> Anybody that walks through the door today is free laundry. So all of our washers and dryers are free? And for him to take his time to, to do all this and let the customers know that he appreciates them, it, it means a lot. It leaves a lot to me. And then we've got some muffins and we'll have pizza coming soon. Cake, who doesn't like cake? This is our fourth year open, um, and we have been trying to do something every year um, just to kind of um, uh, check in with our customers, get to interact with our customers over a longer period, um, and and right. let them know how much we appreciate how they've supported us since we reopened. <laughs> and because of their support, we're able to do these other programs too. It's important for me to be here in the community and know who my customers are and for them to know me. I was telling my mom today, we should bring all the blankets and everything, but we didn't have enough money to do it. She told me it's everything free. I got so excited. I went back home and I bring some more laundry. For me, it's a, a way of giving back and for me to connect with the people who've been through the same situations as me. My name is Ross Dodds, and I'm the owner of Wash on Western here. So I got into this business uh, back in 2014. Um, I had been in LA for a few years at that point and um, just felt like it was something that uh, would always be needed um, in Los Angeles, and so started looking. This laundry had been here for over 22 years when I purchased it. Um, and um, actually where we're standing used to be a little uh, walk-up chicken restaurant. Five days after we closed escrow, there was an electrical fire in this unit and uh, burned down the laundry too. Does this mean I should get out of it or I should dive into it? Because <laughs> we had just barely purchased it. So just in the five days that we had been here and I just couldn't believe how many people were stopping in and introduced themselves and welcomed me to the neighborhood. Right after the fire, um, like whenever people would see us in the parking lot, they were stopping and they were very concerned that it wasn't going to be a laundry anymore. So many of our customer base really walks and pushes carts over. So a quarter mile is, is a challenge with one week of a family of laundry. So they really were concerned that we weren't coming back. I was already appreciated here and I knew that we needed to come back. Current owner reached out and said, we work with this lady. Uh, she comes in once a month on Sunday for four hours and does free laundry. My name is Maike, Maike Bort. I'm the director of a nonprofit here in Los Angeles, A Million Drops. We work with homeless people, and at the time we did free laundry nights or days at different laundromats. I think I, I read about an organization called Laundry Love um, that had been around for several years already, and I thought that was such a beautiful, simple concept to help in a very basic but important need, wearing clean clothes. I just thought, like, that's an easy thing to do. I just need a few volunteers in a laundromat that agrees to have us once a month and then raise a little money for detergent and 
and for the quarters. And you know, so that's how it started. We found Ross and they started doing it here every month, once a month, doing laundry for free for people experiencing homelessness. <laughs> well, we had done the laundry here before, but the lady who owned the laundromat sold it and she called me and, and I was like in shock because I thought, oh, now we have to find a new home. It's not always easy. And uh, she said, oh, no, no, don't you worry. I already told the new owner about you. He's going to call you. And I hung up and the phone rang and it was Ross. She explained to me that she uh, was just a small nonprofit, kind of on her own. Over the phone, we already felt like we were friends. And then when I came here two days later to do the free laundry, it was like we had known each other forever. She would walk around Hollywood and invite um, homeless, mostly youth 18 to 25, to come and do laundry for free um, on one Sunday a month. While here, then they, she would get to talk with them, see where they came from, how they got to be homeless. And I had asked her previously, like where the needs are, and it was always toiletries and whatnot. So as the laundry, we put together backpacks with toiletries and, and then we ordered in food. Um, and it was, it was kind of my first introduction to not only the community, but what um, what I had here at the laundry. Once we reopened, we brought back Free Laundry Day here. As the laundry grew, we found it was really challenging to bring people in and just offer free laundry to just certain people coming in. We switched from the once a month free laundry uh, to a voucher program that we hand out to people that you know need to get their laundry done. We issued vouchers for one wash, one dry, we provided soap for them. They can go on whenever it, you know, it fits in their schedule and they don't feel like, oh, there's like 20 other homeless people and everybody stares at us. And you know, so it's like, I think it's more respectful doing it that way. But when they can come in here, like they're a Fluff and Folds customer or asking the employee a question and hand off a coupon and then they go and load their laundry just like normal, um, it, it changes the feeling behind it for a lot of people. My name is Michelle Denise Miller. It was very clear pretty quickly that she just was a great energy. When you first get hired, my first thing is that just give me a chance and I, I will show you that I can do the job and they gave me that chance. And she loved her job right from the start. Um, she worked really well with all of our other coworkers. Um, but one of the things that kind of started to show a struggle right in the beginning was her cell phone. I broke my phone without a doubt. He said, oh, you need a new phone. He went and got the phone for me. One of the things I've seen over the years with the laundromat is that something that is a concern or a stress Sometimes I can't leave it at the door. I could see Michelle when she wasn't stressed about something. Everything else just became so much better. If we can solve it with a cell phone, then that's super easy and it pays off for how she handles the rest of her life. It's kind of removing the one complicated thing off of the plate. My name is Dee Dee Johnson and I'm the manager at Washa Northstein. Dee Dee has been with the company for a year and a half now. When I originally started working here, I was homeless. I was homeless for about a year and I was pregnant. Me and my husband, we slept on a bus or we stayed at the armory, which was a winter shelter because normally throughout the year, all the other shelters were full. I have been sober now for two years. Then the two years of the sobriety, I obtained this job. I found a job while I was homeless because of the Food on Foot program. When I was in the shelter, a wonderful woman named Joan came. Joan also works with the A Million Drops with uh, Micah. And um, she handed me and my husband a flyer and said, if you need a job or if you need housing, to come to our, first, our program on Sundays. And first, I just had my daughter on Tuesday. And on Sunday morning, bright and early, I was at Food on Foot because I needed housing and a job. So I was determined. There are so many lost socks in the world. People, watch your socks. I just saw a meme this morning that said for every lost sock is a Tupperware top that doesn't fit any of your Tupperware. <laughs> Keep an eye on your socks, people. 
I had ended up quitting and he let me come back. I'm really big on that everybody deserves a second chance. And he gave me that chance to prove myself and I have overly proved myself. I quit like on the spot and I didn't think that he deserved that so I had to come back and apologize to him. And I was sincere and he gave me that second chance and I appreciate that. She was very, very genuine about how she felt she had made that mistake and not necessarily left on the best of terms. And, and to me, uh, owning up to it without excuses is, is the biggest path to a second chance. Sorry, I'm crying, baby. <laughs> I got into some issues with, uh, with subleasing an apartment and I needed to get a place and he, he went on and he helped me get the place. Really, it's like our counselor or, or everything that we need. For him to take his time to, to do all this, it means a lot. My mom took the trip to Las Vegas and she ended up getting pneumonia and being in a coma for almost two weeks. Would you need to go? And she was like, well, I'm still figuring, Didi was like, I'm still figuring out what's going on. I was like, I'm stressed out. They told me that my mom might die and I have to come make these decisions. And I couldn't afford to go see her or to be there with her. Let's just go to Vegas and I'll go with you. The next morning he was like, are you ready to go? I was like, huh? <laughs> Ross packed up and flew us both out there. She didn't tell me she hasn't ever flown. <laughs> And then, yeah, so I got on my first plane. She looked like she was in labor. And I went to take a picture and she turned and smiled. I was like, oh, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> we went and he stayed with me until um, she woke up and then we came back. I didn't know about a lot of the stuff she was going through in her personal life when she first started because she didn't feel like it was appropriate and she didn't want it to affect her job or me to be concerned she wasn't gonna show up or something. I first started um, working here, I would go to school during the daytime and I would get off at three and I didn't start working till eight o'clock. So I would come and then I would sleep right there to get some rest before I would start my shift. A year after working here, um, that's when I got my apartment. Takes the public transit, she's never been late. I think that's impressive. I hear it's never on time. <laughs> um, so I, I live far and I wake up every day at three in the morning and I'm on the bus by four just so I could get to work on time. She's killing everything else on her own. But like what can we do that that's, solves a problem in her, her life? And it just seemed like a car was a great opportunity. Um, I mean, he's been telling me to get my driver's license forever, and he's been he helping me with that, too. And then I came to work, and I'm like, what's going on? He just pulls up, and it's a flipping Kia right there. So I started crying. I didn't understand. I'm not used to somebody being so given without wanting anything in return. So yeah, that was, that was like the, the best birthday gift I could ever got. I hope the future holds more and continued acceptance in the world, bringing it smaller to Los Angeles, taking better care of all of its residents. Especially dealing with the homeless population in LA, it seems way too big to get involved. So if you want to get involved, start smaller, start with an organization that already exists, and go from there. I feel like everybody can stop and have a conversation with somebody being on the street because normally they, you know, people just walk by them and don't even look at them. And just having that conversation is already making a big difference. Everybody can carry a little bag with some toiletries or socks and water in the summer here in LA. Water, as simple as it sounds, um, you know. And uh, um, I feel like people sometimes are helpless and don't really know what to do or what they could do. And, like I said, it can be really simple. You just have to start thinking about even just w where your daily path takes you. Like before I owned the laundries, I was an Uber driver. So you're on the road all the time. You see people sitting at the side of the road. I couldn't afford to give them cash, but I could carry water in the car or carry a granola bar. and and. 
that costs very, very little. We instantly go to it's monetary, it's monetary, or it's time, it's time. And while those are needed, there's other things that if, if it's along your path in the day, doesn't, doesn't take the time. And I think just remembering to smile at people and say hi is sometimes all somebody might need that you don't even know because they're, they're feeling invisible in the world and then you just smiled. I started on Fuck the World in 2006, first by just selling t-shirts and hoodies that have the slogan printed. And the money that I made, which was not much, but whatever I made went to charity. So it was not about making money for myself, it was always mon making money for uh, local charities, local again. That has been an important f word for me all the time. I want to have an impact on my own community. I decided I'm going to have an Unfuck the World Day just because I think it sounds cool. <laughs> and um, since I'm from Europe and I have traveled and I know people in a lot of different countries, that was kind of the first year we already had participants in the Philippines and Canada and Australia and several countries in Europe. And anybody can participate as long as it's local and positive. It's a mom with her two kids picking up trash uh, on the side where, where, you know, it's like anybody can do something. But they have to like abide by the rules, positive local. <laughs> You have a much, much bigger impact if you do something in your own community. If our own communities are broken and not working, how can we change the world, right? How can we make the world a better place if it's not working in our own home? So I think you need to start from here and then spread. I would say like not everybody is homeless because they wanted to or because they did something wrong. Sometimes life circumstances put you in situations that are unexpected. So treat everybody with love and kindness. Because like being homeless, the people that I've met from being homeless were nicer to me and I'm still friends with them compared to people that I grew up with, who I don't even speak to anymore. So everybody has a story. It's not hard to make a difference in somebody's life, even if you don't know you made the difference. Good deed done. <laughs>